<laughs> James, this is a question for you. As a No supporter, how comfortable are you being associated with a campaign that continues to spread misinformation and disinformation? A campaign which is a modus operandi of working to confuse people when the lives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are on the line. How do you feel being associated with Senator Jacinda Price who said there are no on ongoing negative impacts of colonisation, as well as Mar Warren Mundine who stated the Uluru Statement from the heart is a declaration of war on modern Australia? James. Well, I think people are, are definitely confused and the confusion comes from the complete lack of detail in what this proposal is. <laughs> and uh, it was a very, very <laughs> poor strategic decision of the Yes campaign to ask the people of this country to sign a great big blank cheque and say, look, after this, the politicians are going to figure out all the detail. We won't give you any information on how this thing's going to work. And I regret being a politician myself to admit this, but I don't think the Australian people are in a mood to trust the politicians on that. I think you're just using talking points. All right. So I want to take you to the point of the question. Um, Senator Jacinta Price, you said there was no ongoing negative impacts of colonisation. Do you agree with that? Well, I respect Senator Price so and she's you, more entitled than statement? me to make those sorts of comments. I'm not an Indigenous person and I can't speak from that lived experience. And no, I don't it's think not about the lived experience, people... it's about the facts, because we, we've got history in this country. I, I I'm not she, Indigenous, I think she holds an opinion history. that should be respected and others with different opinions should be respected as well. So but do you think, lie, one minute, let me just ask the question, do you think, because that's the questioner, there are negative ongoing impacts from colonisation? Well, I think Jacinta Price has made the point or the view that in her case What's there isn't. What's your view? I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not an Indigenous person and I don't think it would be appropriate for me as a non-Indigenous person to tell Aboriginal Indigenous lives, people though, how to feel to about colonisation. I think that would be completely inappropriate and I think Jacinta Price is perfectly entitled okay. so to have, have her view on So you don't have an opinion on whether colonisation has been negative in Australia? To Indigenous people? I, I'm not an Indigenous person. So you don't have an opinion so, on that? I think, sorry. I just find it. I, I think, think, I think, most I think would colonisation, have I, th I think European colonisation has been an o overwhelmingly good thing for the great society that we live in. <laughs> I'm a proud Australian. I'm a very proud Australian. I'm proud of our Indigenous culture. I'm proud of the English institutions that came to this country with colonisation. I'm proud of the multicultural community that we have. I'm very proud of this country. And I think Jacinta Price is a great Australian and she's very entitled to put wow. her views forward. And, and this is exactly, excuse me, this is exactly why I'm sitting here. Because that is disgusting language. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe you. You are disgusting, bro. Any politician, any politician that sits there and says stuff like this is not, they, their heart is not in the right spot. Your spirit is wrong, bro. <laughs> right? And any politicians that sit up here and ask me b to be an Australian, I don't want to be that. Okay. I'm a Naranga, Noongar, Naranjiri and Ghana woman first before anything and I will never be a part of that. That is disgusting. I hope you go home and think about what you said tonight. I seriously do. I want to bring... Can I just say one more thing? You can and then I'm going to bring in one our more questioner. Thing. Yep. Can we please get an answer from Peter about Kayam coming and meeting with our community? You keep skipping yeah. over it, sis. And I know you've covered Aboriginal politics for a long time, but you are skipping over my voice now. Yep. I will ask the question. I'll just go back to Clayton because we've already brought him in now. Clayton, I want to bring you back in if I can. Um, and I, I am going to say it again. I want to you do a bit of a... You Clayton, my brother. I, I, will, I will. I want to hear from Clayton, though. Clayton's come all this way to be in the audience and he has a right to speak as well. Um, Clayton, <laughs> obviously we, we heard a response there about that colonisation part of that question. There was more to your question. What's concerning you? Uh, well, I think, uh, I think a no vote is a continual, uh, continual denial of Aboriginal people to have a, a seat at the table. Um, you know, the point's been raised that, you know, we have Indigenous uh, First Nations people in, in, in government, but as Sally has said, they represent their, constitu their constituents and they can be voted out, as Linda has said as well. Um, as Linda has said as well, why wouldn't you listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people when you're making policies about their lives? Uh, not doing that doesn't make sense to me. I respect Aboriginal people's right to say no to the vote, 
but I haven't heard, because Aboriginal people will be talking about treaty, but I haven't heard a good argument from non-Aboriginal Australia about why they would vote no. And I, have, and I didn't hear that tonight, James. I didn't hear that in your answer. Um, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, a telling point for Australia and it's peeled the scab off the racism in this country and we need to deal with it. And voting no on Saturday is not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK. <laughs> I'm just going to let James respond because clearly um, uh, Clayton doesn't feel like you've addressed that. I mean, there was another part of your question too, Clayton, which was about the declaration of war of the Uluru <laughs> Statement. Do you see it that way? I wouldn't use those words, no. I mean, Warren Mundine can speak for himself. He, he's been very prominent in this campaign. He was invited the program tonight to be uh, clear. He was unavailable. Yeah. Look, I have a different view to you and we respect each other. We're both Australians. Your vote's no um, you know, stronger or weaker than mine in this referendum on Saturday. And, uh, you know, Peter talked about respectful disagreement and we can have that. And, uh, you know, this is an important debate about how we run our country and the future of our country and addressing those challenges. And... I'm not going to, you know, get into any personal attacks on statements people have made or different views that people have got. We should have a respectful de debate. I happen to have a firm view against this referendum, but I respect those that are voting yes. OK, uh, Peter, I want to bring you in. Firstly, to answer Natasha's question, will your minister meet uh, with them? Um, I think Kaim is a, one of the most decent men I've ever had the pleasure of working with. But in respect to your request for a meeting, I think we'll do one better and I'll, I'll meet with you and... Um, whoever else that you would like to bring along to I make representations. And I'm, time. and I'm I'm more than happy to, to facilitate that. So hopefully that gives an opportunity to, for a more thorough discussion of around whatever Well, this is the only concerns. way I could get that meeting. Okay, the meeting's the happening. Meeting. Please continue. <laughs> All right. so, we've, um, we can't resolve the world's problems, but we've got a meeting. That's right. Um, in respect to the, the referendum, there's an important bit of context that I think is worth just quickly covering off on. And James has made it... Um, clear tonight that the coalition now supports constitutional recognition, <laughs> which hasn't been a view they've had um, in perpetuity. This is a relatively recent phenomenon as far as I can tell. When the Uluru Dialogues, in the lead up to the Uluru Dialogues, there was the recognition movement. And the drumbeats of the conservative zeitgeist was, well, that's just symbolic. Mm. If we recognise Aboriginal people in the constitution, it will be symbolic and it won't change a thing. It doesn't have any practical meaning. And the Uluru Dialogues came out and said, we don't just want recognition, we want the opportunity to actually have a vehicle that can give us the opportunity to inform the policies that affects the lives of First Nations people. And that would be done through a, a voice, an advisory committee that doesn't have the power to usurp the parliament. In fact, it maintains the, the primacy of the parliament. parliament. So all we've got out of the Uluru Dialogues is recognition, which apparently the coalition now support, plus a non-binding advisory committee, which had at its heart an objective to fend off the conservative attack point that this would just be symbolic and wouldn't be amount to anything more. Um, apart from the fact that it might actually have a practically good outcome on informing Indigenous policy in this country to improve the tragedy that we all agree needs to be addressed. May now, I for think... the life of me, Sorry. for the life of me, I, I don't know why in our hearts we would say no to such an elegant and simple proposition. Um, now, you can argue against anything in politics, but when you do that, you've got to have the courage and the capacity to say what else you would put in its place if that fails. And we go back to the beginning of the night when James was asked repeatedly, well, what is the coalition promising to do differently? And they said, well, more grassroots listening to get better outcomes. That's precisely what The Voice is. Patricia, can I just... I want to address what Warren Mundine said around the Uluru Statement and as one of the signatories to that, and I was there at Uluru at the convention um, with all those incredible First Nations leadership who were there, which was after these, the regional dialogues that the Referendum Council held. It was actually about love. It was about love and hope. The senior people that were there who said, what we need to do is not give this statement to the politicians because politicians turn it into politics, as we've seen today. They wanted to give that invitation to all Australians because they all said in 1967, Australians walked with us. 
Australians said yes to us. And they wanted that same love and hope again. And that's why the Uluru Statement from the Heart is actually addressed to all Australians. And it, the invitation is there. And on this Saturday, you have to respond. You have to sit there with your conscience and sit there and go, am I responding yes or am I responding no to that love and hope? That is what you're doing on that day.